This is a drawing of the X-15 rocket plane. This is a drawing of the X-15 rocket plane, and so is this. What do these drawings all have in common? We're going to tell you in Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. What those X-15 drawings all have in common is that they're all different versions of line art. And we're going to be exploring this beautiful black and white medium in this episode. But before we dive into that story, I want to talk about where it all started. I was drawing in graphite pencil from the time uh, uh, from early childhood. And uh, by the time I was a teenager, observational drawings were the name of the game. I was developing uh, hand to eye coordination by drawing things that were in front of me and putting those images down on a drawing pad. In this case, it was the uh, general aviation ramp at uh, New York's JFK airport. Uh, but I was drawing in pencil, which was a very pliable medium. Uh, I was actually allowed out on the ramp in some cases and could stand there and uh, depict these beautiful airplanes uh, in pencil. But graphite pencil was a, a very organic medium. Uh, it really was an easy way to develop tonality. And it was just a very delicious, uh, enjoyable way of creating imagery. And then in 1965, I began the uh, foundation art program at Pratt. That was a mandatory one-year program, learning all the fundamentals. Uh, and this was required to, regardless of your major. Uh, and so drawing took on a whole new importance because we were required to have a drawing pad with us at all times. But here's where things changed. Uh, this is a pencil uh, drawing from the uh, apartment. Uh, my dorm was actually an apartment building in, uh, in Brooklyn, looking across the river at the Manhattan skyline. And, uh, uh, you know, it was, it was, we were always drawing, was the point. And uh, what changed is that we went from pencil to marker. And this was like taking the training wheels off your bike, because uh, drawing and marker was very unforgiving. Uh, it had a very different kinesthetic sense of uh, tonality, putting your uh, hand, the pressure of your hand and your fingers onto the, uh, the marker and, and just what you saw was what you got. And it was a very different way of drawing. And as I said, uh, quite a bit harder. But once you mastered this, uh, you had a very different uh, discipline in putting imagery down, which leads us to the Rapidograph Technical Pen. I can hear the screams of anguish from those of you in the back of the room there. Um, if you recognize what that little wheel is at the right, uh, that's how you uh, unscrewed the points because you had to clean them uh, quite often. And it was a rite of passage, but the Rapidograph pen takes us to the next step of this program because that is tech illustration. Using the different line weights, they came in different thicknesses. And using these different thicknesses, uh, you could create some really uh, compelling tech art telling a story, in this case, uh, McDonnell Douglas DC-10 emergency evac chart uh, used for the safety cards of the airplane. Uh, or you could do uh, structural renderings uh, using different line weights, as you see here. In many cases, uh, photos weren't able to be used if we had to make a plaque or something like that in the Douglas Art Department. We had to translate it into a line drawing using rapidograph, as you see here. Freehand, you could get a totally different look. Uh, the DC-3 that you saw previously was done with uh, straight edges and French curves. This is a freehand drawing using a bit of crosshatching, and it's a very different feel. as uh, of course, the Cessna Bamboo Bomber. Uh, this is an enlargement of a spot illustration of a United DC-6 starting its engine. Uh, at this size, it looks pretty crude uh, when you see it at actual page size. It's a nice little spot illustration. And I should mention that this technique was used for speed in many cases. We'd have, uh, I'd always said at the art department, we always had tight deadlines. We were always working under pressure. And so uh, get out the pitograph set and a drawing like this could be done in 20 to 30 minutes uh, tops. And so that was a real need for uh, uh, being able to produce this stuff quickly. Another United airplane in a different way of uh, creating tone was the stipple effect using the point of the rapidograph and just creating this little dot pattern, again, using different line weights. Uh, and then when you look at the whole uh, airplane, you can see the tonality uh, using the combination of line work and stipple. Another technique is a combination of the rapidograph with what we call a scratch board. 
where in this case, I was doing the Douglas Sky Streak, put in most of the airplane with the rapidograph freehand, and then uh, just put the, bl the black ink painted onto the bottom of the wing and using an X-Acto blade, scratched out the white highlights uh, that you see here. It was a, an odd combination, but it was a neat effect. Using the thinner points of the rapidograph, you could create some very fine uh, crosshatch patterns and uh, simulate the fabric here on the Douglas M2 on floats. Or in this case, using a combination of scratch board and all the techniques we just talked about, uh, create a, uh, a dark sea blue gloss uh, Douglas AD Sky Raider uh, with the highlights that you see here. Sometimes you would just draw the basic outline and let the eye uh, connect the connect the dots, as it were. The your eye would fill in the contours. Now, those you you see the curvature of the nose of the sailplane, uh, the pilot there in the cockpit waiting uh, to be launched. Uh, but look at his hat, and again, there's no lines. Your eye is uh, completing the shape for you. But it's a very graphic example of uh, the power of negative space and good bold rapidograph uh, uh, imagery. Moving on uh, from rapidograph, I'm gonna talk now about marker. And this is a different way of creating black and white line art. Uh, this is the pilot razor point pen uh, using straight edges and French curves and a bit of freehand. And here's a close up of uh, some of the tools that you can see here. Uh, you would literally uh, put the point of the marker or the pen along the edge of these devices, uh, ellipse guides, circle guides, and that would help you create uh, tight imagery. Uh, but uh, here's a close-up of that F-100. And then the what I call the completely ruled image using all the different tools, uh, very little freehand uh, drawing, uh, if at all, uh, you see here in this F-16. The tone is, again, the crosshatch. We'll talk a little more about that in a moment. Uh, but this is a really uh, clean way of creating black and white imagery. And this in, in this particular case, this is an engineering drawing that went on to be uh, developed into a painting. But the elegance of line work, I can't stress enough how, how, uh, how simple and beautiful and elegant the shape of an airplane can be. And I couldn't think of a better example uh, than one of the most aesthetically beautiful airliners ever created, the Convair 990. Uh, this is in the American Airlines Astrojet markings, and it's a uh, line drawing showing the imagery of the airplane. Here's a combination of uh, line drawing, crosshatch, and uh, Prismacolor pencil to add in the uh, bold tones of a FedEx DC-10. Here's a close-up of that. Very effective. And we have what I call the final engineering drawing. This is the ultimate evolution of these techniques I was telling you about using the drafting tools and very carefully uh, uh, drawn uh, crosshatching. And this is a final engineering drawing for a constellation, TWA Super G, that became this painting. But let's take a look at that cross-hatching because this is really complex and very uh, critical to achieving the tone that uh, we're talking about. Um, in general, the angle of each of the strokes runs roughly about 60 degrees. Uh, can be varied uh, from 45 to 60 degrees. And this is what gives you the different uh, density, which in this case is used to replicate the different uh, shades of metal on the engine cells of a uh, Eastern Lockheed Electra. Looking at the forward part of the airplane, uh, you see here the combination of line work. And I wanted to mention about the windshield. There's uh, uh, to me a very special importance to the windshield on an airliner or on any airplane, uh, to me, that's the eyes of the face in the portrait. Uh, so here's the Eastern Electra. And if you took the windshield away, watch what happens. You get the little Orphan Annie effect for those of you old enough to remember that comic strip. But let's put the windows back in. You see how important that is. So uh, we give a lot of care to the uh, accuracy of the shapes of the windshield uh, on any airliner. So there you saw the Electra. Here's another depiction of an Electra. This is the silhouette. And I wanted to show you this because it really is a good example of how bold graphic uh, shape can be very effective in depicting uh, the airplane and capturing the what I call the personality of the airplane, even in silhouette. So here you have the Electra. Compare that to an F-18. 
look at how dynamic the shape is in black and white. And even a uh, Cessna O2 Skymaster or Mixmaster as we call them. And even something like the Concord, beautiful, sleek, supersonic shape. And this takes us to the profile drawing, which is the side view. Here we have the Bell Huey. And here's a uh, more detailed profile of an AC-130 Spectre uh, Hercules gunship. And an airliner with some color tone. And this is how we would design the color schemes at Douglas. But the profile drawing was uh, an art form all onto its own. And this brings us to this part of the story where I would like to share some thoughts about the great REG Ron Davies. I was so privileged to work with Ron. I met him at Douglas. He later moved on to the uh, Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum as the curator of commercial air transport. But uh, Ron and I collaborated on a number of projects and it all began with this book, Finnair, The Art of Flying Since 1923, written by our dear friend, John Wegg. And Ron was uh, contracted to do the maps. He was a wonderful cartographer, very, very talented artist. These are all hand-drawn. And I was contracted to do the aircraft profiles. Well, that collaboration resulted in uh, Ron and I setting off on our own. And uh, we were uh, employed by Continental to write their history. And again, I did the profiles, Ron did the map. Look at this incredible uh, map talking about the merger with Texas International and the overlap of all the different routes. What a story, but he did every dot, every stroke, uh, all the lettering was all done by hand. Just a really impressive piece of artwork. The Continental book served as the prototype for a series of 15 books on different airline histories and different aspects of aviation. The first being Pan Am. And here you see Ron's map and my uh, uh, profile of the 747. And here's the front cover of the book. And this is a page in the book on the Boeing 720 showing all the different elements. We have uh, the profile, silhouettes, information, everything you need to know. This is the way I would do it. Uh, I would create a rough sketch, in this case, the IL-76 for our book on Aeroflot. And then I would uh, refine that to a scale drawing using a pitograph that you see here, uh, using a lot of reference material and photos and such. And this is how the art would appear on the page. And again, Ron's idea was to combine uh, basic text information about each airplane and have a quick ready reference uh, as well as telling the story and using uh, artwork to to uh, illustrate the aircraft. This is the uh, page from the Lindbergh book. These were uh, airplanes that Charles Lindbergh flew in the Pacific uh, assisting uh, US military in uh, uh, increasing their range and navigating over water. But you have the F-4 Corsair at top and the P-38 Lightning. And these are two of my favorites of the 250 profiles that I did for Ron on those projects. And again, you can see the rapidograph line work, and in this case, flat color. But uh, it brings everything full circle in terms of the beauty of black and white line art. So there you have it from that first uh, sketch of the X-15. This is the airplane that's hanging from the ceiling in the uh, master gallery at the uh, Air and Space Museum in Washington, DC. And uh, that pretty well tells you the story of the, the joy and beauty of creating black and white artwork. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. I'd like to dedicate this to production artists everywhere. In my era, we use natural media. Today, it's all done digitally, but it's the same process. So until next time, take care.